this football team here, I hate this football team here in this universe. Arsenal Football Club have been a constant thorn in my side. We bottled the Community Shield against them to start the year. This is a game we really need to win. We play them at home in the league. And look at this record for past meetings. It's not great. Today is episode number 106 of Park to Prem. Alongside that game against Arsenal, two other rather big matches. Firstly, our first home game in the Champions League in our brand new stadium as we take on Rangers, who in this universe have just become a giant of Scottish football. As I say, more of a giant than they were before. They had a tycoon takeover in this save game, and whilst the funding has been scaled down, they've got a mighty good team, and one of their key players, of course, is our former man, Roger Ospina. He's on £200,000 a week at Rangers. He is secure in the bag. And as if those two games weren't enough, after that we take on a Manchester United team who are currently top of the Premier League. Yeah, today is a mighty, mighty big triple header. Let's see how we get on. Let's run the intro and get straight into things, shall we? Yes, folks, how is it going? I hope you guys are doing absolutely amazing. We are back here in Park to Prem. Since last episode, we have played three matches, only one in the Premier League, two cup games. The first, a win against Bournemouth. NDIA with two. Bailey Salmon with a goal as well. Yeah, very, very good to see him get his first ever goal in uh, Rugby Town Colours. He is looking like a very good centre-back. I feel like the few just looking bright. Maybe I didn't need a centre-back after all. Saying that, the one league game that we've played... We failed to win. Uh, taken on West Ham, away from home. Bailey Salmon with an own goal. We did come back from, well, a 3-1 down to get a point in this game, which felt rather big. Something fishy about an own goal, though. Fishy, Salmon. Okay, move on. We did also open up our Champions League campaign with a game against Sporting. As you can see from the league table, we win it quite handsomely. Yes, in the end, this game was a rather convincing one. 5-1, it finished. Davidson Kule scored. Yeah, David scored. Yeah, I know. I've been trying to get rid of him all this time. I played a rotated team in Europe and I thought, well, we'll just try him at centre attack in mid. See what he can do. What can he do? I hear you ask. Uh, the, the answer is score a tap in. To be fair, of all the chances you're going to see finished, it wasn't the hardest. Nevertheless, though, that continues a really good start to the season, that 5-1 win. In spite of the draw against West Ham, we are still unbeaten in the league. We know that is going to be tested today. I am also a little bit aware that we are already a fair few episodes into the season, and yet we've just about played two months. So the plan of attack today is do a triple header and then go away into hibernation, play a load of football manager and probably come back around the time that we take on Man City, Liverpool and Arsenal back to back. I'm not doing the Arsenal game, just to be clear, but I'm looking at Luda Goretz as an away day thinking that could be a fun game to play a really rotated team in and you guys get to see some of the kids. When it does come to the squad so far this year, if we just sort by potential, you can see we really are using the entirety of our squad. In fact, there's only a handful of players yet to make an appearance. One is our third choice goalkeeper. One is Wayne McKenzie, who of course we picked up on deadline day. Probably should make him available for the under 21s. And the other player is Karim Kanate, who's now decided he doesn't deserve a wage rise anymore. You might remember he wanted a new contract. He's seen the light, so that's good. Still want to sell him. And in terms of top performers to start the season, Rojas has been absolutely sensational. Seven goals for him, although they have all come in games that you've seen on camera, if I'm not mistaken. Elsewhere, Diop's chipped in with plenty of goals. Five goals in five Premier League games for him, looking like a really great addition to the squad, doing exactly what we've asked him to do. And in terms of the highest average ratings, alongside the two players I've just mentioned obviously Sinkule one game he played well in another player who's had a really good first couple of appearances at the club is Carlos Osse I don't want to get too carried away yet but yeah, he, he's been very good at right back. Two assists, two appearances. I will say, sadly for him, he won't be making an appearance, at least to start, in this first game against Arsenal. Although, midweek against Rangers, I think we are going to play the rotated team. In terms of the team for this game here, we are currently without Alex, who of course is injured to, and got injured, I think, last episode. Mosquera has also been out with an injury. I realise here, I've got NDIA at right back. Really, what I should do is, I should move... Bolton to right back and have Anderson in at roaming playmaker. Of course, Anderson, a player we need to continue to give game time to. I'm trying to train him to play as a roaming playmaker. I feel like he could be a good roaming playmaker. He just needs to learn to run and actually work as a team. 
and actually try to run. He's quite lazy. The only player I was wondering about going into this game was Huari. He has missed a load of the start of the season, of course, through injury. In this game here, I'm being told he could play 45 minutes. He's been out with a twisted ankle for over a month. I don't know how badly he twisted it, but apparently quite badly. I think in this game here, we'll give him the first half. Maybe then NDIA comes on off the bench. I think that's probably the most sensible course of action. In terms of the rest of the team, though, it is in a really good spot. Like I mentioned, Diop and Rojas are finding all the goals. Misiak has recently signed a new deal. That is some really good news. He's now contracted for five seasons. And on top of that, Celik hasn't quite been... I guess the superstar, super sensational to start the year. I say that. He's got five goal contributions in five Premier League games. I feel like my standards for this guy are just far too high. Now, I am going to cling on to the fact that at least going into today's episode, we are one of two teams in the Premier League who have not yet lost. Arsenal, who we're playing here, have already lost. Therefore, we're better than them, right? Just ignore the times we've drawn. That doesn't matter. Um, but no, to be real, for a moment, we need to get a good result here. Of course, at the end of last year, we managed to get a really good run of results against difficult games but we still couldn't beat Arsenal in that run of games I'd love to turn that around here here is the team they're going with Pedro Enrique up top I don't recognize that man he's their top goal scorer I feel like we need to find out more Pedro Enrique 25 years old have they just signed him no they haven't just signed him in fact he played a lot of games for them last year and I just hadn't noticed this year just gone or rather so far this season I should say six goals in five I feel like when you look at his profile, he doesn't look scary, but apparently I need to fear this man. Of course, Snedden is playing against his former club here. Anderson into the midfield. Snedden on a booking after six minutes. Do not like that. That said, I do like this. Throw in in a dangerous area. Lehman, the former Tottenham man, skips past the right back, runs into the middle, pulls it back to Celik. Can he turn? He doesn't need to. He's going to lay it to Marky Anderson. Celik with another assist. Marky Anderson with the all-important goal. That was a really nice finish. Lehman, by the way, absolutely burnt his man there. Holes left with a holes in his pocket. He's been robbed. Anderson, nice finish too. Balbuena, <laughs> no chance. I feel like if you don't know the story between me and Balbuena, maybe you've missed a few episodes. You don't know why I've just laughed a bit creepily there. If you do know, you know. If you don't know, I wanted to sign him and then he turned me down to go to Arsenal. I'm not bitter. No, I'm, a, okay, I'm a bit better. Okay, coming up to half an hour played in this game. Not exactly been a classic. Don't need to worry about this being a goal fiesta, though. We've still got two more games to come after this. Any kind of win would be nice. Of course, this is our first time playing Arsenal in our new stadium. We didn't really drink it in, I feel like, enough last episode. Oh, my word. They've hit the post. You probably couldn't see that because I was zoomed out. I was too busy enjoying the stadium. Does, it, does the stadium look good? I, I mean, I prefer the far stand to just having an empty stand. Although I did kind of get used to that by the end of our time at Butlin Road. Three minutes of added time at the end of this first half. There's not been a whole lot of chances. It's not exactly been a classic, but we are a goal to the good. You could argue slightly undeservedly. We scored from one of our first chances of the game. We've not created a lot. To be fair, they've not created a ton either. I'm going to tell the players I'm far from pleased. I want to get them fired up here. I'm a little bit scared about Snedden on a booking, but I already knew I was probably going to have to sub off Huari. I feel like I've got to sub off Huari. The question becomes, do I trust Bailey Salmon and Enough to bring in Bailey Salmon over Snedden. This might be really controversial. I really like Bailey Salmon. I feel like if I sub him on and we lose, it's because I've brought him on. But at the same time, Snedden is walking a tightrope, and I just feel like against his former club, he could make a rash decision and get sent off. You know what? I'm changing both centre backs at half time. That might be silly, but I feel like it's necessary. The worst thing is I've made those changes now. With the benefit of hindsight, if I go on to lose this, people will comment saying, why would you ever change both your centre-backs? Well, I think the Huari one is justifiable. The Snedden one may be more of a question mark, but equally, if I didn't take him off and then he got sent off, I would have got loads of the same question, wouldn't I? Oh my word. Okay, Diop, you know what? I don't need to worry about it, do I? Because we're 2-0 up now. It's Diop with the goal. Celik with the assist. I was getting told that Diop rhymed with deflop. I'll tell you what, he's not deflop. He is the man right now. It is 2-0. Coming up to an hour played as well. We we should make more changes. Misiak's not having a great game today. Lee Min is struggling for fitness as well. Alex is coming back from injury. I'm going to bring him into the team just to try and get him some minutes. Misiak, like I said, is tiring a little bit. Sam Fay, come on down. I know there are some hardcore Sam Fay fans out there. They're pumping their fists right now. Your boy's on the pitch. Let's hope he can actually make something happen here. As Rojas is going to have to maybe do a bit of defending here for us, the striker. As Arsenal, bring the ball forward. And then waste it by shooting over. That's fine. Do more of that, Arsenal. Don't mind that. Okay, Bailey Salmon. What can he do? He's going to play it forward. 
I was going to say towards Rojas. I feel like that'd be generous to describe that as a pass towards Rojas. It was a pass to absolutely bloody no one. Bruno now has the ball for them, and he's going to throw it out to Saliba. Sanfe applying a little bit of pressure, but of course, in that role, he's not going to do a whole lot on the, in the way of pressing that high up the pitch. Arsenal do play out through our initial press. They're now going to get the ball towards the box. It's going to be headed away, and now Sanfe to Diop. If Diop's onside, that is a sensational pass. He's one-on-one. -on -one. He finishes it. Is he onside? I think he's onside. It's 3 0. It's 3 0. You know what? New stadium, new us. Also, Sam Fay on off the bench. Imagine having a player this good to bring on off the bench. What a ball that is. It wasn't even close to being offside. To be honest, the finish, I was pleasantly surprised with. The amount of times you see strikers miss those kind of chances in Football Manager, I feel like he's far too high. Really, really happy with our performance. Three up. I feel like I should, I should make more changes. Suddenly, the centre back change seems like genius. Bailey Salmon scored. Is he onside? I think he's offside. If Benny Salmon has scored here, what a time to get his second ever goal for us. I know he got the own goal against West Ham. Is it going to count? VAR is going to check it. The players aren't celebrating. The, yeah, it's been disallowed. That's a shame. I have got one last sub to make here, and I am going to make it. Roger Ojas, I'm going to take off. I am going to bring in Mateus here, who is left-footed to a player on the left-hand side. You might remember, Mateus had no knowledge of the striker position. I feel like he must have very good versatility, which is a hidden attribute in Football Manager, which helps with players learning new positions. He has picked up striker so quickly. He's already competent. I mean, look, I've been doing YouTube for 11 years when it comes to Football Manager. Even longer before that, I'm barely competent at my actual job. So the fact that he's learned to play striker in about five weeks, pretty bloody impressive. Have to admit, this is a game where we have just taken every chance that has come our way. But let's not play it down. You know, sensational finishing is something that is down to the quality we have on the pitch. There's three minutes left of this game. Arsenal, three goals down. Even if they were to get one back, I really wouldn't feel too concerned here. Of course, Clean sheets are nice. We'd like clean sheets as Sosa brings it forward for them. He's going to dink it towards Cho. Salmon reads it sensationally. Celic can't get there. And now Sosa with the ball again. I suppose if Arsenal do score, I don't have to pay a clean sheet bonus. You know, maybe there's a positive to be had. Noir Neri, I can't say his name. He's played it wide to Sosa. I think Noir Neri is actually... Is he a real player, Noir Neri? I think he is. I think he's like a 16-year-old player in real life for Arsenal. Noir Neri? Yeah, this, guy, this guy's a real player. He's got very good potential in Football Manager. I wouldn't say he's like the world's greatest player here, but it's kind of cool to see a player that starts at Arsenal at the start of the save game who's just become a regular for them over many years. Okay, four minutes of added time at the end of this game. We are going to be Arsenal. I've not been able to say that very often in this save game. It's going to happen here. There's Still going to try and ruin the clean sheet as Saka's there at the back post. Afoni had it covered. That should be game set and match. There's another highlight. I mean, if nothing else, we've got some revenge for the last game. I'd love a fourth goal. That would be good, wouldn't it? Sam Fay giving it away. Arsenal, are they aware that they're three goals down? Arsenal are really trying just to get one back. I mean, in some ways it's admirable. In other ways, it's just a bit annoying. They're like an annoying little fly. Just go away or fly out the window. We don't need you around here. Arsenal bringing it forward through the middle. Don't ruin my clean sheet. I want to look like a genius for changing the centre-backs. Noir Neri plays it in. Efoni saves it. Was that really a necessary highlight? Or maybe that wasn't the highlight. Efoni, are you about to get the assist of the season? Just launch it, long son. Yeah, there you go. Have it. It's coming now. with snow on it. Diop doesn't even jump. He's, he's already checked out this game, and I can't really blame him. He's done his job. Cho... Saka, was he offside? He scored. I thought he was offside, but the linesman's not raised his flag. I mean, we've played four minutes of added time here. Have Arsenal ruined the clean sheet? They've ruined the clean sheet. Okay, it finishes 3-1 here. You know, was it close? Was it close? He's on. He's onside. Just... Good finish, good goal. Yeah, whatever. We've still won. What a sad little life, Arsenal. Ruining my clean sheet, but one thing they can't ruin is the fact Dion got mad at the match again. That is his third pair of the match in six Premier League games. That's not a bad little return, is it, really? That result there for us was good. Elsewhere, Manchester United won. Of course, Manchester United will be playing our very next league game. Elsewhere, Chelsea and Everton drew. Two teams who, well, you might expect to be the other way around, I suppose, in the league. Chelsea, currently down in the relegation zone. Tottenham, you might remember, had a stinker of a season last year. They're up in seventh. As for Man City, they didn't play. If they win, they will go above us. Diop, like I said, man of the match for him. Give him some praise. Two shots on target, two headers, two goals. Two's the magic number. And that does set us up nicely for our next game. It is against Rangers. It is in the Champions League at home again. It's our first game in our new ground in Europe. And this might be controversial... I think I'm going to play the fully rotated team. Is that is that controversial? It'll be some kind of variation. 
of this team here, although I forgot to register Swainston. Apologies to Justin. He can play in the league. I forgot to register him for Europe. I'll be honest, I thought he didn't need to be registered because players who are under 21 who have been at the club two years don't need to be, but this is his second season at the club. So he's not been here two years yet. It's on me. I made an error. Anyway, next game's in three days. We're going to get straight into that next one. Can the kids do the business? I bloody hope so. Game number two today at home against Rangers. I know that they have a well-invested squad and they've got some pretty good quality players in their ranks, but truthfully... I feel like we should be beating this team very, very comfortably. You know, they've got a few very, very big earners. You might remember Remy Benyon. We actually looked at him once upon a time. He was transfer listed by Man City, and I decided his wages were too much. I still maintain his wages aren't too much. The, the fact they've got him on 300,000 is absolutely bonkers. They've also got players like Arojo here, who's a pretty good player. But ultimately, despite this little bit of quality they have, I feel like we've got more than enough to see them off even with the youth i hope at least which brings me on very nicely to today's team this is the team we're going with sam fate is gonna start Mateus up top i mentioned the fact he's learning to play striker quickly he's not yet scored for us i'm wearing a brazil shirt he's a brazilian international i'm trying to manifest it elsewhere at the back it is going to be huari and bailey salmon alongside each other of course huari needs some minutes to get back up to fitness osei is going to make his live commentary debut at right back mention the fact he's played quite well at right back probably should acknowledge at this point he's very strong with his left foot yeah, I don't know either way he was trained to play right back, but he's done fine there for us so far, so he's going to keep playing there for us. Elsewhere, another player making their live commentary debut, at least as a starter, is Dimitrov here, the Bulgarian youngster. Don't think we've ever had kind of a mainstay Bulgarian player burst out onto the scene and be a regular first team member. Maybe Danny here is going to be the man with the plan. And speaking of Daniels, because I know someone's going to ask Jack Quest, Sinkule, uh, he's on the bench. Could bring him on if we want to. Okay, Rugby Town versus Rangers. Uh, our tactic doesn't really <laughs> fit very well, does it? The Champions League graphics. It will ignore that. That's fine. Here is our brand new stadium in all its glory. They are going to be playing a 4-1-4-1. A bit of a defensive system. It might be that their wide players actually are playing higher up and it's more of a 4-3-3. We'll have to see how things go. Like I mentioned already, in spite of the fact that we are playing a rotated team. I expect a win. We are taking on Rangers here at our new stadium. I feel like all these cinematic Champions League cameras really allow you to enjoy the view and we'll just take in every angle of the stadium. Here's our players. There's their players. Let's get a bloody win, shall we? Say that, they've got a throw in on the far side. Inside the first three minutes here. Silly man lays it to Benyon. Inside to Jose. Turns his man. He's got a headband. He very nearly had a goal. That shot only just went wide. Okay, Osse, they're left-footed right back. It annoys me that, but you know what? I'm not going to question it. He's done well there so far. And I thought for a moment, Areco was going to score. Sam Faye's header, a little bit ambitious. Uh, NDIA's quick. He's not that quick. Suppose the good news is, inside at least the first 15 minutes, not much of a sample size here. Whilst we're not having a lot of the ball, we have had a fair few shots. We are certainly not being hammered in this game. Should also acknowledge, Hedag has been playing in goal in Champions League games, whilst Ifani has been playing in the league. I still don't know who my best goalkeeper is, so I'm just trying to keep them both happy. NDIA, Dimitrov, I'll tell you what, that goal came from absolutely nowhere. We love that. The Bulgarian with his first ever goal in rugby colours. I feel like if I had a Bulgaria football shirt at this point, I should be taking off my shirt, running and putting on Bulgaria's shirt. I don't have one though, so we'll just have to enjoy this goal whilst wearing a Brazilian shirt. I mean, it was a simple finish, but you know what? Lovely goal, NDIA with an assist. Ah, okay, uh, Sam Fay injury. Uh, okay, dilemma time. Do we bring in Wayne McKenzie or Sinku? Yeah, I'm, I know what the answer is. I feel like this is just a narrative, isn't it? The, the game has set this up. They know what's going on with me and Sinkule. He's on the pitch. To all the Sinkule defenders out there, that he's, he's potentially playing for a future at the club, I suppose, now. He scored against Sporting. Maybe he'll score again here. Only a couple minutes left at the end of this first half. There's not been a whole lot of chances in this game. They actually had their chances really early on in the half, and since then, it's kind of fizzled out. Might have an opportunity of our own here with Areco. Oh, my word, that was a bit of a pop shot from range, but the keeper forced into a save. Of course, we've not really got a big meaty forward to aim for, but Areco and Mateus are two very, very quick, kind of fairly speedstery strikers not the kind of strikers you want to float balls forward to but to get in behind i feel like 
is kind of the plan there. So far in this half, we've not really done that nearly enough. But when you look at the chances, defensively, been very, very solid. In spite of that, his football manager might be a little bit happy. I can't let the players know that. I'm going to tell them I'm far from happy. Osei looks anxious. I have faith in you. He's still anxious. I'm subbing him off. You know what? I'm prone to a little bit of anxiety myself, but that doesn't mean that I can justify a football manager. To be fair, he is also just very, very tired. So Michael Bolton on at right back. I really hope the Sam Fay injury isn't serious. If it is, <laughs> Sinkule is going to get used so much and I kind of hate it, but I kind of also love it at the same time. Football manager has a weird, sick, twisted sense of humour, doesn't it? Anyway, this second half has kind of continued like the first. Rangers have had one shot on target so far in this game. We might have a chance here. He very nearly scored. You know who it is. I'm not going to say his name. He nearly scored. And now we're played here. I feel like I should maybe make some more changes. Dimitrov is struggling for fitness. You know what? Wayne McKenzie, come on for your debut. And Berksu, I think I think it said Berksu or Berksu, sir? Berksu, I think it said. I think that's how you said the, uh, it's like an uh. So it's Berksu. So say it like you're from the north. Uh, I'm going to bring him on for his debut as well. We're just giving all the kids their debut here. I feel like Rangers should probably feel like I'm disrespecting them a little bit here with the squad that I've filled in this game. But so far, they're doing the business. We might have another chance here. Zhao Victor, yeah, he's on the team sheet. Yeah, didn't mention him earlier. He's here, defensive mid, taking the free kick. Very nearly getting on the score sheet. We do now have a corner. Areco's over it. 19 crossing, remember that? 19 crossing. Look at it all there. Back post it goes. It goes over everyone. McKenzie against his former a club just as a reminder the young scott what a pass that is that's the first thing he's ever done in a live commentary great pass great pass <laughs> let's, let's move on there's another highlight immediately here it's still only a one goal game i'm far too jovial and chilled out given what's on the line here would love it if mckenzie could make something happen on, on his debut of course we picked this guy up on deadline day from rangers just as a little reminder he's playing at the left uh, kind of attacking mid position for us. Sinkule playing it towards Areco. Keeper clears it. McKenzie wins the header. NDIA wins another header for us. Berkser can't get there. And now Gabri Vega is bringing it forward. The Spaniard lays it wide. Ball is given away though. McKenzie reads it nicely. Can we make something happen on the counter? Areco, Bolton. Michael Bolton. I need you to hurry up. He puts it in. Back post. Mateus. Heads over. I thought for a second the shirt had worked. I just noticed Bailey Salmon is dead at centre-back. Like, he is really, really struggling here. Snedden, on you come to end this game. We might have loads of kids on the pitch. Wari and Snedden are playing at centre-back. Rangers, by the way, they've had 50% of one shot all game on target. The keeper, her dad's had absolutely nothing to do. He's on a 6.7 rating, and that is really unfair because he's not had any saves to make, so he's never going to get a good rating here. In the end, because he got a clean sheet, he ends up with a 7.2. Elsewhere, NDAA, man of the match, not a class. Classic, but you know what? We dominated that game. We rested up the players. Feel prepared now for the game against Manchester United. And that is also two wins in two in the Champions League. Of course, last year we did manage to get into the top eight, which allows you to skip a knockout round. I'd like to do that again, but at the same time, if it was a choice between playing a rotated team and finishing outside the top eight, but making the knockouts versus maybe picking up some injuries, tiring out the first team and bottling the league as a result, I'd rather play an extra knockout round. Also... Sanfei injury. How bad is it? Four to five weeks. I am in physical pain. Sinkule and his believers. You guys are celebrating right now. Burks are apparently very tired. That's his debut for us. No, in fact, no, it's his second game for us. How is he very tired? Not going to question it. Okay, next game is third versus second at Old Trafford. It's not going to be easy, but historically, we actually have a very good record over Manchester United in recent games. We beat them in the FA Cup and the league to end last year, looking for our fourth win in a row against them right now. Okay, two games down, one more to go. This is the last game before I go away for a little while between episodes and play a whole lot of football manager. I'd love to cap things off with another win here. In terms of team news, Mosquera coming back from injury he's failed a fitness test we should just put Osei on the bench but in terms of the starting 11 it's in a pretty good spot I think all things considering we have pretty much a full shrimp team Sam Fay, obviously going to be out for the next few weeks it does present an opportunity I did wonder if David Sinkule might be the man on the bench but actually I think Dimitrov's the man who I'm gonna have on the bench and maybe bring on from time to time he's impressed so far in his Champions League appearances and he's a very very good creative player this guy who at 18 definitely needs needs to be getting some minutes so yeah we'll see what he can do if we need to bring him on but when I look at this team 
It's a team that I very much believe in to get a result here. We beat Manchester United in this fixture, I think 5-1 away from home at the end of last season. Maybe not expecting that again today, but a win... I feel, I feel like he's almost on the cards. I feel like if we don't get a win, I will feel sad. Of course, just as a little reminder, Manchester United are currently ahead of us in the league. They are a good little team in their own right. A win here, we would leapfrog them. I think we'd also go ahead of Man City, who play tomorrow. But of course, it's still very early on in the season. Ah, okay, uh, Diop. Injury. A potential thigh injury. That doesn't sound good, does it? Now, the question is, Areco. Or Mateus. Mateus still hasn't scored, but I'm wearing a Brazil shirt. I feel like it's almost meant to be. Here's the head to head comparison. Oh, there really isn't a world of difference between them. I think just because I'm wearing a Brazil shirt, so it must be a sign, I'm going to go with Mateus. I feel like Mateus is one of those players that I've got a soft spot for, and I couldn't really tell you why. I mean, ultimately, we're going to hope that that Diop injury isn't too serious. The fact that he's got injured in the fourth minute and had to go off. Not great, but yeah, you know what? It's a chance for another player to step up and make something happen. And if there is one area of the pitch where we have too many players, probably is the striker department. Mateus here, fresh off the bench, making a mazy run. Of course, he is a winger being converted to a striker. So when he has the ball at his feet, I expect magic to happen as that ball in was a bit disappointing. But Bolton, he can shoot from here. He lays it wide to Alex, the right back. Options inside. Rojas is one of them. Roger Rojas with the goal. Alex with the assist. I want to say, oh, that's been coming. But actually, it's the first real meaningful chance of the game for either team. Alex getting to the byline nicely, pulled it in. There was a sea of players to aim for and Roger Rojas smashed it in at the near post. Lean in, far side, throw in. I feel like this is the kind of game where if we could kill it off early with two more goals nice and quick, that would be delightful. A bit like the Arsenal game. You know, if we want to control a game and just continue to control it throughout, that would be good. You know, a couple of early goals set the mood, then we don't even have to worry about the fact that Diop and Faye are injured. Okay, Alex to the byline again. He's done it again. He's played it to Rojas. He can't keep getting away with it, except he can. Manchester United can't contain him. Sneddon laid it wide to Alex. There were options down the line. And well, Alex was that option. Of course, our wing packs do have a lot to do in this system without like a winger in front of them. And Alex and indeed Lee Min, NDIA, the various players over the years that have played in this part of the pitch, they have been more than capable of making the most of that, I feel like. I want to get all giddy and say we're so much better than Man United, and I mean, we are, we're 2-0 up, but actually, this game has not had many chances in it. We've had two shots on target, it's been Rojas twice, with absolute tap-ins. I suppose the big kind of thumbs-up positive for us is... Manchester United have not had a shot on target in this half so far. If funny, not having a great deal to do in this game either. We are dominating the play and defensively, we're looking solid from open play at least for now. That said, you know, Manchester United have the ball right before half time would be the worst possible moment to concede. The ball has been played around the back here. Pacho for them stepping out with the ball. Lays it forward. Pietra maybe looking to double up on Alex in the wing-back area. But you can see here, who, who was that? Someone, Bolton, getting back and defending. That said, it's only as far as Chilek, who has options in the middle. If funny, though, collects the ball nicely. And now I'm looking at him to get it forward. Manchester United initiating a really high press here. If we could get the ball over the top, I feel like there's that opportunity to perhaps catch them out. Or maybe they're going to play the Uno reverse card. It's the Frenchman whose name I can't say. I'd, every time he play against Manchester United, I feel like he scores for them. And this was a weird goal. I mean, they just carved us open through the middle. This defending, I think it was Sneddon there, not great. This shot as well. Okay, I was going to say it looked weird. It went down the middle. It actually deflected off Alex's heels. Bit unfortunate. Okay, Bangura, the goalkeeper, laying it wide to Chielak here at right back for Manchester United. The worst thing now would be if they scored two right before half time. We've got a chance to maybe respond. Mateus inside. Rojas could have had the hat trick instead. He shot it wide of the mark. That chance there, the last of the half, you can see by that spike in the XG chart. It was a bloody good opportunity as well. At the break, it is 2-1. Feel like we should be positive about that. I've tried to be a bit bad cop there, and Rojas hasn't liked it. I've managed to convince him though, so that's good. 
Also, Mateus on a 7.1. He's having a good game so far. Okay, into this second half we go. Less than a minute played and already we're into another highlight. It's Mora bringing it forward. United got one right before the break. It'd be a bit of a sucker punch if they were to get another now. The Frenchman lays it inside. Ken reads it nicely. Celic with options left and right. Rojas is the option on the right with some space in front of him to run into and stretch his legs. He runs straight into Pacho, but maybe a chance to force a turnover in possession. Manchester United looking to launch it long. Sneddon wins the initial header. It's played behind him, though, to the scary Frenchman. And oh my word, a funny. What a save that is. That could be massive for us. Saying all of that, still a corner to deal with. I feel like actually in recent years, we've been pretty good at dealing with corners. Set pieces at one point, they felt like something where whenever we conceded one, my heart sank and I worried. Actually now, I feel like there's a, a degree of competency here at Rugby Town as we're gifted the ball. Bolton winning it in a good area. Mateus back to Lee Min. Loads of players in the middle for Lee Min to aim for here. Can he pick someone out? He can't at the first time of asking, but you know what? We might have another chance here because Lee Min back in the wide area with... Huari, who's going to lay it inside to Bolton. Nice build-up play. Can we see some end product? Lehman, Rojas is there. He squares it. Celic tackles. The ball's gone in. The flag's raised on the far side. I think, and I could be wrong here, I think Rojas was offside from the initial chance, so this isn't going to count. It was a weird goal as Celic tackled the ball into the back of the net. Sadly... It's not going to count. And yeah, like I said, I think this was Rojas from the initial ball in. I thought Rojas was going to shoot for the hat-trick here. He was comfortably offside in the end. Had he shot and got the hat-trick, it would have been amazing, but it wouldn't have counted anyway. Coming up to an hour mark, I was thinking about making some changes, and yeah, there's just highlight after highlight after highlight. I've not had a chance to make the changes yet. Maybe a goal would help shape my decision-making. Huari playing it towards Rojas, who can't get there. Mora now to the scary French person. He launches it forward to Evan Ferguson, goes over everyone, falls to Mora, and it's two big balls over the top that have caught us out there. Mora makes it 2-2. And, I mean, what do you say here? This play, a bit unfortunate. Sneddon wins his header. And, uh, well, from there, there's just space in behind. Mora finishes it. 2-2. Two, two. Okay, an hour played here. You know what? We start this game well, but we are falling off the pace. Ken has not had a good game today. I am going to bring in Zhao Victor at defensive midfielder. Elsewhere, Misiak not playing great in this game. Dimitrov, I am bringing you on to see if you can be the man with a plan. Celik's been poor here, which isn't exactly great. Um, I'm just thinking about what other changes I really want to make. Well, I feel like we've not actually been that awful in this game. It's just been two big balls over the top. I think we'll go with just the double change for now. Just trying to steady things perhaps a little in the midfield. 25 minutes at Old Trafford. You can see from the XG. Manchester United have just been clinical, which is something we've been pretty good at being lately. Maybe a chance here from a corner. It's dealt with initially, but Bolton is going to mop up the pieces and give it straight to Manga for them. That is not what we wanted to see. Manga now bringing the ball, laying it inside to Jao Felix. Cassaday now, the former Chelsea Italian man through the middle. Jao Victor, they are carving us open. Surely not. Manga, edge the box, shoots over. I need to get shouty, shouty lads. What are we doing here? I don't know. I've, I've got a shout, shout, and that was a highlight in their half. Maybe real life shouts the meta. Maybe you just say, what are we doing here? Goals happen. Mateus, he scored. I'm a genius. And Dimitrov with the assist. Two of the youngsters we picked up this summer coming up clutch. I don't want to over-celebrate here because, well, based on what we've seen so far in this game, this game is far from over. But Mateus, first goal for the club is absolutely massive. And it's great to see two players we've subbed on having a really meaningful impact. Feel like this game is going to open up a little bit. Manchester United have switched to a 4-2-4. They are committing then on the attack. They have a set piece here. Big to power ability to defend set pieces. That could be tested here as well. Manga has at the edge of the box shoots. And for the second time in this game from that kind of area, he's missed the target. We now have a chance of our own, perhaps. Alex, he's already got two assists. He's going to be looking for a hat-trick of them. There are players queuing up in the middle. Bolton is one of them. Inside, shot, and Dimitrov. He has an assist already. He very nearly had a goal there. Ten minutes left. Celic, corner. Need that kind of insurance policy goal at this point. A fourth goal for us would be massive. Four goals at Old Trafford is a bloody good achievement if we can muster it. Part of me feels like it might be necessary in this game. Based on what we've seen from ourselves defensively 
uh, I'm concerned. I'm going to shout focus to the players. Bolton has loved the focus team talk. Everyone else is upset. Now no, they've got a chance. Cassaday with the ball in. It's half headed away and then it falls to Milano. Why did I shout focus? Why I never shout focus. I don't know why I did it. Also, why earlier did I say about, oh, we're good at set pieces now. You know, corners, we're good at defending them. Yeah, set piece, we concede. A funny, not great there by him. I think Haddad, maybe he, maybe he would have saved it. Oh, there's another chance. I was going to pause and make changes, and I was too busy thinking about Haddad. Now they're on the attack. Imagine if they score again. I don't want to imagine it. Oh, my word. Okay, João Felix has just missed an absolute sitter. There is two minutes left in this game. Um, what, do, what do I do at this point? Am I happy to get, just take a draw? Maybe I am at this point. Uh... Chelik's tired. Anderson, come on, just fresh legs there. Lee Min is a bit tired too. NDIA. Palmy thinks, oh, let's go more attacking and try and make something happen just really, really quickly. But ultimately, um, well, there's, there's no time left here. I don't know why I'm making these changes, but if we score, I'll look like a genius. Of course, if now nothing happens, I've just wasted 10 seconds of your life and you're not getting it back. And I will not apologise because that's still an okay point. In the grand scheme of things, draw against Manchester United... Not awful. I don't particularly like the way we conceded the first two goals or the third. But you know what? I feel like that's not an awful result in the grand scheme of things. I mean, ultimately, they are top of the league. We maintain our unbeaten start to the season with four wins and three draws. Of course, the draws are a bit annoying because they are starting to add up. In terms of the injuries here, Diop's out for four weeks. Misiak... Thankfully, only one to three days. Might have started screaming if he was injured too. And Roger Rojas, man of the match in that game. I feel like this guy is just a bit of an unsung hero. He's averaging at the moment a goal a game, having a very, very good season. Now, like I mentioned earlier, we've played a lot of games in this kind of early stage in the season. I want to get to the meat and potatoes of the season a little bit quicker. So you know what? Rather than come back in October and November, get your advent calendar ready because we're coming back in December probably for the games against Manchester United, Liverpool and Ludogorets. We'll, we'll see. I feel like I want to do an away day and Ludogorets could be fun. But then again, plans change. The EFL Cup could still rejig fixtures. There's no point in planning too far ahead. Hopefully you guys enjoyed seeing Sinkule actually play on a football pitch and indeed the triple header. Always fun to get a few games done in an episode so you can really see the team and indeed see all the players. I feel like here we've got a very complete squad full of many players who I want to be giving minutes to. And the good news is... For all the competitions that we're in, that's not too difficult to achieve. I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your Wednesday. We will be back tomorrow with more Park to Prem action. Until then, take things easy. It's me, Jack, and I'll talk to you guys in a bit. I'm out.